Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Diaz to the to mic and. Thank you, Mike. That was a nice presentation. As uh, we are all getting ready to uh, roll back in, hopefully I can keep you awake after lunch. <clears throat> so my name is Jose Diaz. I am currently the immediate past president of the Maryland chapter, uh, and I'm the, one of the governors, together with my partner, Joe Sacron, who is now the new president of the Maryland chapter for the next couple of years. And I want to take a few minutes to tell you at least what we've done for the last uh, 24 months plus uh, in dealing with the events of the COVID and what have you. So uh, March 2020 was the last time we actually had met in person. Uh, and as many of your chapters, we started planning several months before we had the paper submissions and abstracts and reviews and what have you and then various meetings and who we're gonna to bring to speak and what have you, and, and then prepared. And then it became immediately evident within about a week or two before, and all the news was coming out of New York and various places up in the Northeast that COVID was beginning to run rampant. And by the day the meeting actually showed up already, half the, the attendance numbers had cut. And so it was only the beginning of what we were going to be experiencing for the next couple of years. And then the next thing is that we had basically everybody closed, okay? Uh, we went into our individual institutions. We started planning for a very, you know, significant COVID response. Uh, and uh, we basically turned the chapter off for a while. Uh, and we, we stopped taking dues and what have you. Uh, at the direction of also the, uh, um, you know, the chapters as well as uh, the you know, the college recommendations. And then we realized that uh, not only were we surgeons, you know, unsure about what our role was gonna be, but then I actually started asking, so what is the role of, the, of our college responsibilities to our members? You know, should we be not preparing or sending out information? And so that was actually the next step of what we started to do. Uh, as we started to pivot in terms of you know, are we were going to remain, you know, a bystander to what was going on, or we were going to step up and provide information. And so really the next step was to begin to take information that was being brought to us by the college and then begin to distribute that to our colleagues out in the trenches in terms of taking care of, you know, potential COVID patients to, or the emergency surgery patient or the cancer patient and the trauma patient in terms of who got an operation and who did not and how do we manage appendicitis if it comes in in the middle of a you know, room full of COVID patients. And so those were kind of the initial processes that we had to deal with. And then I convened a meeting uh, online, of course, in terms of, all right, so here we are in the middle of a pandemic and we've already done some of the initial work in terms of taking information that the college was given us on to address patients, surgical patients in the pandemic response. But what about the chapter? What about the business of, uh, you know, being a provider of information for surgeons? Uh, and stepped in our YFA on RSA group in terms of coming up with ideas. So very similarly to what was talked about earlier in the day in terms of leadership, and me not coming up with all the ideas, I actually turned around and asked the group, so what ideas do you have? You know, please give us some ideas because we need some good ideas. Now, what we did is we basically come up with providing information to our members. Uh, and we came up with various different topics that uh, we felt we needed to do. We needed to continue with our advocacy in terms of going to our, our state uh, leaders. And in Maryland, like hopefully many of you, there are physicians in state leadership, uh, whether it's uh, in, in our case, Senate and delegates, uh, so we actually had an opportunity to sit down with our, uh, one of our senators, Dr. Lamb, who is a physician who actually practices medicine still over at Hopkins. We talked to them about things that are important to physicians, specifically surgeons, and residents, and medical students, in terms of I'm in private practice and I'm going through this COVID, you know, how are you going to help me? I am a resident being in training in this uh, scenario, and I have loans, and how are you going to help me? Or I'm a medical student currently in medical school, and I have all these 
uh, tuition uh, aspects and, and how are you going to help me as far as in potential legislature opportunities. We got to sit down with an old friend of mine, Dr. Ken Sharp. Uh, he's always been an excellent mentor to me back when I was at Vanderbilt. Uh, and we sat down in terms of, you know, how can we move the chapter, the Maryland chapter, as we are starting to advance it and come up with different ideas. And he was very helpful. Uh, also, what happened next was, as it has, has happened nationwide in terms of the DEI perspective and re focusing our approach to medicine and realizing that we've actually not been great at taking care of our, our house of surgery, we took a very different approach and said we need information to how to address the issues that are currently right in our face and be able to move forward. Uh, and then we took some time, to, uh, Joe and I, to sit down and talk and uh, hopefully prepare him for his great future that is coming ahead in his presidency. Uh, we had a fair. I thought that this was a very interesting opportunity. Our resident team actually decided that um, they had been going through a lot of virtual interviews here for fellowship, and they wanted to find out, well, how do I prepare myself for applying for fellowship? So uh, we had several of the, my resident uh, RSA group and get a group of individuals to go online and then get a bunch of program directors and go online. And then they went subsequently into various different chat rooms, depending on whether or not they wanted to be a cardiothoracic, vascular, acute care surgeon, et cetera, in terms of how to better prepare to apply for residency. Also, we had a very specific opportunity, also uh, almost a uh, open forum give and take with various leadership uh, surgeons, uh, women surgeons in the uh, American surgery, uh, and one of my past partners, Dr. Turner, who is now our director uh, as well as my current chair, Dr. Lau, participated on that as well. And also part of what we heard earlier today, uh, we had a wellness session. Uh, a Linda Burton, we sat with her also for almost a full hour online and had a conversation about how to address wellness issues uh, in terms of professionals and specifically surgeons and how to better approach that. Uh, the second year, we also were a little more purposeful. We went back to our advocacy group. We have another p plastic surgeon. Uh, she's a Maryland delegate, Dr. Terry Hill. And we went back to the very exact same topics, making sure that they had heard us the year before about private practice surgeons, academic surgeons, and the issues that they're concerning with them. Residents, as well as medical students, and issues with tuition reimbursement, and how is the delegate and the Maryland legislature going to proceed on having those specific issues addressed. Uh, we went back to our DEI topic uh, and actually had uh, Dr. De Dana Tellum uh, discuss their approach at Michigan uh, in terms of being able to be very purposeful in recruiting women in the, the recruitment process as well as um, in various individuals of different race backgrounds. And then we had a kind of a very spe special, unique aspect. One of our resident trainees, who's actually going to go off to be a uh, plastic surgeon, gave us a perspective on uh, his career and how he ended up going the path that he took uh, in terms of uh, a cleft lip and uh, repairing that, and also global surgery from that perspective. Uh, so as we plan for the future, and this is a little bit of, uh, taken apart from what Dr. Sharp had previously told me, which is not to necessarily include your young folks, but I think that our young folks are the future. Uh, I, I think that they have some great ideas. Uh, they definitely think outside the box, uh, and one just needs to be open and, and take the energy that they have and basically direct them. So I do want to thank uh, the members of my chapter that were involved as we reinvigorated the chapters from uh, when I started. I also want to send in a quick shout out, uh, Dr. Shannon Rimdowski from John Hopkins. She's one of the recent uh, award uh, ease for the Resident Research Scholarship for the 2022 and 2024. Um, and thank you very much for uh, the time. Thanks. Thank you.